Welcome to part 1 in our tutorial series on how to develop a Contras like game with Free Visual Engine G Develop. For this series, we are assuming that you already have installed and know how to work with the engine. For the graphics, you have already downloaded and installed Piskel, or if not, have and know how to use other graphics edition tools. If not, let us know in the comments, and we will create another video on how to perform those setup tasks. In game development, before jumping into any tool, it is very important to know exactly what you are going to, what resources you will needing, and if you don't have them, how you will be producing them. In our case, we have analyzed the game and took some notes used to create a mind map, to help figure out what we will be doing and track the progress. In a real game production, we would have to produce a first version of a game design, but in our case, we will be using the Contra Wikipedia entry and a mind map. You can find both links in the description. For the graphics, characters and environments, since we wouldn't have the time or the resources to actually make the graphics, we have searched for some free game art, that could sweep this tutorial, and we have found a very good set of sprites and tile sets at Game Partners. A very interesting outcome from this decision, is that we have several main characters in the pack, so instead of keeping the game 2 players multiplayer mode, we will be able to move up to 4 characters and double the fun. You can find the link for the art assets in the description of the video. So let's start. First, we are going to take a look at what we will be facing. Let's go to Contra's Wikipedia, which will be acting as our game design doc, and check some of the main elements of the game. The first thing that we can see, is that Contra is a run and gun game, a type of side-scrolling shooter where the player is running and shooting at everything that moves, usually in more than one direction. We can also check that it has different view modes, a plain 2D, a fake 2 5D, and a pseudo perspective 3D where the action takes place vertically and horizontally. This will not affect us for the moment as we are using pre-made tile sets, but it will impact us on future episodes, as we will have to find tile sets that can be used with those view modes and that are consistent with the art already being used. We can check some of the movement and shooting mechanics, depending on how the player is moving or not, the character on the screen will perform a different set of actions. Finally we can check on how many phases the game has, something that don't affect us for the moment. Let's summarize everything in a mind map. I have fast forwarded the creation of the mind map, and you can see the overall map. I will be sharing it online, in case you want to use it, or you want to add some more information and detail. I have also created some main derivations based on what I think is most important to start prototyping and developing the game. I have splitted the movement mechanics from the combats one, because depending on the movement, the bases for the combat will be different, as the player will not be able to shoot in specific directions. Game mode for now will be 2 players, but we'll expand it to 4 later on. Then, I have listed the types of enemies that can be found in the early stages of the game and I have listed their main movements and combat skills.
Finally, I have included the levels types. But as said, for now we will be concentrating on the 2D side scrolling. I am going to share the link to the Wikipedia and to the mind map document in collaborative mode, in case anyone wants to use it, or add their own notes. Now, we are missing the art. Let's check on the sprites that we are going to use. I have found them free on game. Partners. We have a good number of props. Several cool characters with their basic animations and very consistent between themselves. A good number of weapons and some basic tile sets for the initial level. Of course, this is just for my side of the tutorial. If you want to use your own sprites, feel free to do so. If you want to share them with the community, share the link or some images on the comments below. Okay. I think that we have a very good overview of what is to be done, we can start bringing everything together on GDevelop. Fire up the engine and create a new project. We could be starting from A any of the starter templates, but where would the fun be? Choose the empty game option and then select the folder where you want to save the project files. Open the project properties on the top left button, then in game settings and properties. Let's set some of the basic configurations for our future game, like the name of the game and other parameters. The future package name for mobile versions. The format is always calm followed by the name of the studio and finally the name of the game. Modify the version, we are very far from a version 1. So in my case I have used the 0.0.1. Change the resolution to 1920 horizontal by 1080 vertical, and then change the frame rate to be between 30 to 60 frames per second. Keep it in landscape, or if not, choose the one that you most like. When finished, click on apply to close the properties. Now, let's create the first phase of the game. For that, create a new scene by clicking on the plus button to the right of the scenes option. We are ready to start adding elements. You can see our game window in the middle canvas, and that we can size to fit completely in the window. On the right we have the list of objects that we have in our game up to now. Which in our case is nothing as we don't have created anything yet. Let's create our player. Click on the plus sign and choose from the list the sprite type. Give it a name, in my case player1. This is only the shell for the object, and if we ran the game now, we wouldn't see anything. Let's make it visual by adding a first animation, the idle. Click on the add animation button. This will open the explorer dialog box to choose the file or files of the animation. Go to the folder where you have downloaded and unpacked your sprites, and browse down the hierarchy until you have found the Norris character. We are working with the modern version of the sprite. Filter the files by idle, to get only the idle animation loops, and select all the files associated with the idle animation loop. In my case I am using the normal ones without the zoom. You can choose the one that you like the most, but remember that once you have chosen one type of sprite, you will have to keep using it, if you want the visuals of your game to be consistent. Click the open button, and you can see that the idle frames for the animation loop are shown. Name the animation as idle. This is important to make it easier to be referenced once we have started programming the game. Click on the loop checkbox, as the idle is animation that is looping, and then on the preview button. The animation is somewhat fast. Let's bring it down to 6 frames per second. You can choose the one that better suits your needs. Click the apply button and then drag the object onto the game canvas. Congratulations, we have our player in the game. If you hit the run button, we can have a first view on our game. Unfortunately, not much at this time. Let's create some ground. Again click on the plus sign in the objects pane to create a new object, since we will be dealing with the ground, instead of sprite, choose a tiled sprite. Name it, and choose a graphic for it. You can find one, in the downloaded sprite set, under the lava station folder.
Drag it to the game canvas and adjust its size to the size of our game window. If we run the game again, we can see that now we have a player and a ground, but nothing is happening, because what we have at this time are only empty graphics without any code or behaviors that will control them. Let's add some. Double click on the player or in the player object in the object pane. You can see that we are back to the window where we have set the animations. On the top of the window, we can see that there is an option named behaviors. Click on it. Since we are coding a platformer, and we are dealing with the main character, Let's choose the platform character. A new dialog box opens with specific parameters associated with the platformer behavior. You can left them as they are, or fine tune them a little. It is not important at this time, as we will have to come back later on, to balance correctly the game. Once happy with the parameters, click on the apply button to go back into the game canvas. If we run the game now, you can see that the player start to fall down attracted by the game gravity, and falls through the ground, as we have not yet tell it that it is supposed to be the game ground. Congratulations, you have make your first game with a player character falling down forever in an infinite game space. Let's fix it. Double click on the ground, and in the behaviors window, choose the platform behavior. Click the apply button, and run the game again. Now you can see that the player falls to the ground and stays there. If you press the arrow keys or the space button, the character moves and jumps, but without turning or animating. Let's do this next. Click on the events tab, and then click the new event button in the top right menu. This will create a new event. In case you don't know or remember, Events in GDevelop are a combination of a condition that needs to be met, and an action that is executed if the condition is met. The condition can be single or a set of conditions associated with logic operators like an OR, OR. If no condition is specified and only an action is provided, then this action will be run on each update of develop. On the search box for the events, write key. GDevelop will narrow down on the condition that you can use. Select key pressed and in the text box to the right, Start writing the key that you want to use, in our case left. The condition is now set. What action do we want to perform when the condition is met? Well, you want to flip the character sprite. Click in the actions. Select the player, and in the search box in the right pane start writing flip. GDevelop shows you the selection of actions. Choose flip the object horizontally. We are turning to the left, and our character sprite is looking to the right, so this means that we should flip the sprite. Click on yes and close the window. Let's replicate the overall process for the right turn. In this case we don't want to flip the character as it is already looking to the right. Let's run the game. Great, the character is turning perfectly to face the direction of movement. But it looks very boring because he is just sliding through the ground. So let's make him run. Go to the scene view and double click on the player object and then, add a new animation, name it run, and then add the images associated with the character running by selecting in the folder the run animations. Remember to check the loop option and then in the preview window to set the frames per second to 6 as we did for the idle. Apply the changes. If we were to run the game now, once the character would start to run, he would never stop, because we have not told him how to stop. So we need to implement some events to make the character to run only when he has two, and stop when he don't have two. Jump back to the events tab. We already have the keys being tested, so it should be pretty simple to make it run. 
For any of the directions, click on Add Action, then on the Player Object and then on the search box Write Animation. A list of functions associated with animations will be displayed. Click on Change Animation by Name, and in the text box write the name of the animation that we have defined previously, in this case Run. Repeat everything for the other direction. Let's run the game once more, to see if everything is working correctly. OK, the character starts moving and changes to the run animation. If going in the opposite direction, it flips and keeps running. But, if we let go the keys, it stops correctly from moving, but the animation goes on forever. We need to fix it. Let's go back to the events. To test if a character is moving, we can use a condition that is already predefined in the platformer behavior and that is named as moving. So, select the conditions where we have used the left key. Click on Add Condition, select Player and then Right or select in the right pane the condition is moving and click Apply. Repeat for the other direction. This is a good start, but it will not solve the full problem. If no key is pressed and the character is not moving, then the animation should be changed to idle. Let's create a new event. Let's use the condition associated with the character moving, and since we do it when not moving, let's click on the invert option on the right pane. Now let's create the action for the player with the change animation by name and let's enter the idle animation. Click and apply and run the game. While everything seems to be working, we have a character moving through a mini ground and switches between idle and run. Let's finish for now, and continue in the next episode. I hope that you have liked this video, and if yes, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification and like button. This will certainly motivate us to keep developing this series of tutorials. We will upload everything to our itch.io with all the sources. Until then, good game development game developers.